Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Portland. I'm Nick Miller, alongside Nick Peterno. How you doing, sir? Doing good. Pretty good indeed. You've got what we call Mono Blue Devotion, the new version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so your deck is what, a couple of things I like about your deck. It's aggressive, plays Collected Company, and it's all four ofs. Oh, yeah. Which makes it great for a deck tech. <laughs> a lot of people, when they saw Shore Crasher Elemental spoiled, they're like, this is the card Mono Blue has needed right. to come back. As someone who's playing it in X2 at this point, is it? I think does that it do it does, everything they want? It does a lot to um, keep thoughts on. Obviously, the three pips is where you want to be. But it also is just a great threat by itself. A lot of people aren't very comfortable playing against the type of threat the Shore Crash Elemental is, being able to flicker itself, pumping it. It makes combat really awkward. It does a lot of things. It's not just the blue pip. It's, just, it's a respectable creature in its own right. Okay. And that's the big thing, you know. Yeah, we've seen it have the elemental bonus as well so when you have right. master waves in play you get to have it even bigger yep four four all right we're gonna go down your curve real quick you've got hypnotic siren as your one drop but also being a control magic late in the game of right course. and now your two drop sweet you got Frostwalker, cures follower and the old stratus dancer oh yeah which how many times have you got to do the morph um, especially against the Esper Dragons deck, you go late. The, the, the best thing about it is it's a great top deck. Like this low curve right here is a lot of them are fine to draw late. Like Hypnotic Siren, you want to see it when it's turn seven or eight and you get to take a Rhino or something. Mm -hmm. Stratus Dancer is perfect, like the perfect top deck against Control a lot of times. And so that's what's, that's what's so good about them. But yeah, Stratus Dancer counters a lot of spells. But it's also fine as just a two one flyer. I right. mean, a lot of the games, the play pattern is just like, um, one like hypnotic siren or just stratus dancer and you kind of delve a little bit you just want to mm -hmm. like protect it or just uh get ahead on tempo a little bit yeah i've been super surprised by how good stratus dancer has been in just a couple of games i got to play you know over the couple weekends just deceivingly powerful when you have expensive spells you want to be playing obviously right. frost walker just a 4-1 it was originally a uh, Omen Speaker, um, and I thought that that, did, that card specifically does a lot more for the deck than Frostwalker does. But this particular weekend, the fact that Frostwalker can swing into an Ojitai is where you want to be. Excellent, and yeah. against that deck that's just mono tap lands, you know, you, you, you want to just get aggressive and hit him for four. I think I've done like 12 in one game with a Frostwalker that just went uncontested. So it's great to have those kind of starts too, because like as you can see, the, the, the power ratio on the lower end of the curve isn't that great except for Frostwalker. Right. And so it's good to have those kind of starts where you just. You just get ahead and stay ahead. Yeah. In games where you can land a turn two Frostwalker against a guy who's just going to play a tap land, right. it's a lot of damage. And, and what you do is you can play this game where Frostwalker is hitting for four, hitting for four, and eventually they have to tap out to kill it, right, on your turn. And that's when you can start resolving your Thassas. That's when you can start resolving short crash or elemental with mana up. And it, it, that, that's what it does for the deck. Yeah. Is what Speaking like. of Thassa, there's a card we haven't seen since the last standard format, basically. You know, the Scry ability is still very powerful, but also you get to turn this on and thanks to Collected Company right. a lot of times. Yeah, Collected Company is often four mana for you know four or five devotion, and that's that's huge. Right. And so, it, especially if you can, you know, with the Kiora's Follower on turn three, ideally, you know, you'd hit Thassa and Shore Crasher and be able to untap and just, just go crazy. Yeah, that seems insane when you get that kind of curve. Yeah. I like Salumgar Sorcerer here, the card that's probably led to the most blowouts, oh, especially with Collected Company. Uh -huh, exactly. Re regale us with a couple of tales from this card. What are the best cards you've countered with it? Uh, a lot of, of Ojitais. Um, people don't play around it. Um, seed Rhinos, it's great for snagging a Seed Rhino, especially on the draw. Mm -hmm. um, those are probably the biggest two. I, I just played like Esper Dragons and Obzon Aggro today. That's, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, one matchup you're probably looking forward to is Mono Red, as you've got Master Wave main deck, whereas these Esper Dragon decks have them in their boards and such. Right. You just got it straight up here in the main. Yep. Still a great threat. Um, Shore Crasher Elemental gets the buff uh, for being an Elemental from Master Wave, so that's an interaction. Frostwalker's an Elemental as well, so sometimes yep. you just have a two mana five two, and that's pretty good. Not a bad rate. Exactly. And, you know, with. People were trying to do mono blue before, but the threats weren't very good. But the fact that this is a good threat in its own right opens up master waves a little bit. You right. know, you're not just focusing on being able to master waves to get your damage in. Like I was playing against Obzon Aggro, and it's normally a pretty heavy removal deck, but I was able to like, stick a master waves because, you know, they, they still have to deal with these lower curve threats. Yeah, they've now. spent all the resources killing your previous things. So obviously, it's right. just going to make master better because it's going to live longer. Yeah, especially with Short Crasher Elemental because it's such a resilient threat. All right, take us through the sideboard here. You got a couple in Case and Ice, 
and I want to talk about Sidisi's faithful. The blue yoked ox. We are blocking some. <laughs> we're blocking some tokens. We're blocking some monastery swift spears. Basically, my game plan against a lot of aggro decks, the lower curve ones, the red ones, is to stay alive until I hit master waves. Because right. at that point, the game's essentially over. I very rarely lose to uh, a red deck when you have a protection from red creature in. So against mono red, you're basically just playing it as an 04. Is there yeah. matchups where you have it as the bounce spell? Against heroic, yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of times they aren't expecting an unsummon effect, so you can, you know, if they, they, they don't always tap out for it, but they also, they'll use their God's Willings a lot mm -hmm. more liberally because they don't expect to have to counter oh. removal spells. And so, like, you can sometimes get, a, get like, an 8-8 eight, eight Hero Viros or something like that and just return it to my hand. Not, bad, to hand. not bad for one mana. Yeah, absolutely. Aether Spouts for the full blowouts on, uh, you yeah. know, on defense here. Yep. And then a Counterspell Suite of Negate and Disdainful Stroke against... Uh, the Master Waves come out against, you know, Obzon Control or Esper Control, and then you just bring in the Counter Suite. Mm -hmm. Wall of Frost? Oh, uh, that one's a little lippy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Wall of Frost just... I, I thought it would be good against Obzon Agro. You know, you want to block a Fleece Main Lion or a Death sure. Dealer, and it, it holds the ground pretty well. It just doesn't do enough to progress your, your board. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't just sit back on defense against a deck that's going to rhino you, yeah. rhino you all over the place. And it, it could have been maybe Profaner of the Dead to give me a better tokens sure. matchup. You know, bounce their board. Might have been a better selection, but it's not awful. Adds a little bit of devotion. Yeah, it's worst it's case scenario. Pips. Right. All right. So you've played about seven rounds here. You're five two. Any uh, switches you're looking to make, or how, well, how's the when deck your deck's really all four ofs, I think that you know you've got a formula for it. You could you could um, switch out Frostwalker and Omen Speaker. <laughs> sure. That would probably be the the meta the meta choice. Other than that, everything seems pretty solid. You could try like a Dual Lurker, but I feel like Hypnotic Siren's a little bit better. All right. Well, Nick, thanks for sitting down with me here in the Absolutely. sideboard. Awesome blue green me. devotion deck. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Portland.